Let's do uh, uh, an exercise where we're writing uh, a method that makes use of an array, just like uh, you'll have to do on the AP exam. Here we have a static method named compute odd sum. We have an incoming parameter named numbers. Now, just as an example only, let's pretend that uh, this array has the following numbers stored there, 3, 10, 11, 2, 6, 9, 5. And the uh, positions are numbered from 0 up. Don't forget that very important fact. Arrays in all computer languages typically start with the index position of 0. Sorry for the sloppiness there. And here we go. So this array named numbers was passed from a client program into the body of this method. And our job is to add up the sum of all the numbers in, inside here that are odd. So since 3 is odd, we'll be adding that one. Since 11 is odd, and 9 is odd, and 5 is odd. Whatever the sum of 3 plus 11 plus 9 plus 5 is, that value will be returned from this method back to the client program. OK, well, let's get to it. We already have this array, so there's no need to redeclare an array named numbers and make sure that it's an array and to make sure it has a, a given length. There's no need to do that, but that's a common mistake on an AP exam question related to this is to redeclare numbers. No way. Uh, we will need a variable i to use uh, with a for loop. Uh, hopefully you've already identified the fact that you'll need to use a for loop to iterate and traverse this array. It's called traversing an array. So here's our for loop. And if you want to, you can be lazy and just declare the loop variable right in the body of the, the loop. So here's your standard for loop that would be used. And I'm using the variable j as my loop variable, a nice body to this for loop here. And don't forget, we're going to be returning something. So often on the EP exam, I write the word return just to remind myself later to make sure to put something in that fill in the blank. Now I know I got the point for returning an int. Uh, eventually I'll just put uh, some number or variable will be there. Hey, I need a variable in which to add up the sum. So let's just declare a local variable named sum. Let's initialize it to 0. Don't, let, don't assume that Java is always going to initialize variables to 0. In some situations it does. In some situations, it doesn't. In fact, it gives you an error message sometimes if you do not initialize local variables to 0. OK, so here we go. Uh, J is declared by using the word int right there. And now it's just a matter of doing what we've already learned in the prerequisite course uh, named Visual Basic here at Missing. We use the, the assignment statement sum plus equals. And we want to pull the number out of here If it's in position j, and we want to add it into the running total for sum. And once we get that running total, after this loop is finished and terminated, I guess we're just returning sum. OK, so far so good. Oh, but this is just, uh, why is my eraser not working? Oh, anyway, uh, we, so we know we have to return sum. And we might think that this is good work, that we're finished, but we're not. We forgot to do the hard part of the problem, so we should always reread the specs or what's called the post condition if it's given to you. We're only supposed to add up the sum of the numbers that are odd. So how do you tell whether a number is odd or not? Well, it's a famous trick that Obi-Wan Kenobi taught Luke Skywalker, who taught his son, who taught his son, who taught his son. And since my grandfather was a descendant of Luke Skywalker's, I learned it also. And I'm passing it on to you. If num. No, not num. If numbers position j. If numbers j modded by 2, don't doubt the force. If that is equal to 1, then we know that the number in that position was odd. And we don't need curly braces because we only have one body statement to that if. But for good style, I'm going to put curly braces there. That's it. Let's trace it just to make sure, because we have plenty of time on the EP exam to check our work. 
Um, let's trace it. So I come into this method and I have the variable sum. It's initialized to zero. J gets initialized here to zero as we go through the for loop. Oh, I forgot to fill in something for the, the upper boundary here for J. Hmm. A typical wrong answer would be to count up the number of positions in this example array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A real wrong answer would be to put six here because you see the six there. That's really wrong. But it's also wrong to hardwire it with the number seven, which happens to be the length of this sample array that was given in the problem. That's wrong. You're going to lose points on any uh, buddy's test, not even the, just the AP test. No, what you have to do here to be flexible is to reference the actual parameter numbers and type dot length. But you have to wonder, do I add parentheses or not? Well, for an array, you do not add parentheses because length is a public property in the array class. And you are allowed to type it this way even though it looks weird without parentheses because normally properties are private and you can't do this kind of stuff. So uh, back to tracing this. Uh, numbers J mod 2. Well, currently in the zero position is the number 3. So we're asking if 3 modded by 2 double equals 1. Well, the remainder of 3 divided by 2 is indeed 1. So therefore, this if statement is true. And the 3 at this point does get added into sum. Then we iterate around the loop again, J plus pluses. And that means that we're at the position 1 of the array. We're looking at this 10. Now we're asking if 10 mod 2 is equal to 1. It's not. 10 mod 2 is equal to 0. So this sum plus equal statement is skipped. J plus plus is now the 2, which means we're looking at the 11. Since 11 mod 2 is indeed a remainder of 1, we add the 11 into the running total of sum. And I think you see the pattern here. It's up to 14. We will end up uh, exhaustively uh, uh, adding up the 9 and the 5. Eventually, J plus pluses to um, 7. Because the length of this array is 7. Right now, numbers.length is really being thought of as the number 7. And J eventually does hit 7. At that point, this is false. And we are done with the for loop, and we return sum which at that point I'm assuming is 28 after we've added up the 3, the 11, the 9, and the 5. Have a great day.